So this is the review for pre-calculus unit three, topic two. So we're still dealing with trigonometry and our trig functions, but mostly now it's inverses and some word problems. So for number one, without a calculator, I'm going to draw my special triangles. And everybody has a different strategy for answering these questions. Um, so if you draw the table of values or you draw your unit circle, whatever works for you, um, I like to do my triangles here. So which angle gives me cosine is root two over two? So here's the root two. I know that's the same thing as one over root two not simplified, so that would be pi over four. Another thing that'll be helpful for number one here is to know which quadrants our inverses exist in. So sine and tangent go from negative pi over two to pi over two, and cosine goes from zero to pi. So here where the cosine is a negative, that's gonna be in the second quadrant. So when is cosine root three over two? So that's adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's pi over six as a reference angle. But because it was negative, I'm gonna look in this quadrant. So it's a little less than six over six, which is five pi over six. Now for C, when is sine root three over two? That's opposite over hypotenuse. So pi over three. And since that's a positive angle, I'm sorry, a positive ratio, I use my pi over three. When is tangent one? So tangent is opposite over adjacent. So that's pi over four. Again, a positive one puts me in the first quadrant. Root three, so tangent is opposite over adjacent. So opposite for root three is gonna be pi over three. Again, positive, so it's in the first quadrant. But now negative root three puts us in this quadrant. So I have to go in the clockwise direction. So that is negative pi over three. Okay, fill in the chart. The sine inverse, we have one and negative one. It ends down here at negative pi over two and goes up here to pi over two. So, sometimes it's easier if you draw it, the curve on its side, since we're so used to that. So there is the curvature, this is extra, of the sine inverse. The domain is from negative one to one, or you could say x is between negative one and one. And then for range, it's negative pi over two pi over two, or you could say y is in between negative pi over two to pi over two. Cosine, again, the domain is the one and negative one. Oh, I should have put my x-axis down further, it's okay. But now the range goes from zero to pi. So the domain is again negative one to one. Now the range is zero to pi. Sorry, that was crooked for you on the video. And now tangent, I have a horizontal asymptote at pi over two and negative pi over two. Pi over four gives me a value of one, negative pi over four is negative one. So the domain is all real numbers. It goes all the way left and all the way right. But the range now is not including the endpoints. So I do curvy brackets or I say y is between with no equal sign, negative pi over two to positive pi over two. So for number three, well for A, B, and C, I have to draw little triangles. So four fifths is 
going to be in the first quadrant. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Using Pythagorean theorem, I would get the other leg. So tangent is opposite over adjacent. Sine is positive in the first quadrant, so that is opposite over hypotenuse. So three squared equals one squared plus x squared. So this is the square root of eight. So cosine of this picture is root eight over three. Now cosine gives me a negative ratio in the second quadrant. So that's adjacent over hypotenuse. So two squared plus y squared equals three squared. So this is the square root of five. So sine of this angle is root five over three. Okay, so now I have um, a radian measure. Negative pi over two is down here. And sine is the y coordinate, so that's negative one. So this is asking cosine inverse of negative one. So where is the cosine negative one? That's the x coordinate, and that's gonna happen over at pi radians. At this point, negative one, zero. Sine of five pi over six, well, if I think of my special angles, so sine of pi over six is one half, And five pi over six puts me in the second quadrant, so that's still positive. So now sine inverse of a half is pi over six. And some word problems. So it helps to draw a picture. A 50 foot ladder leans against the building. The distance up the side of the building, oh, find the distance, so that's why if the angle of elevation is 47 degrees. So we have opposite and hypotenuse, so I'm gonna say sine of 47 equals y over 50. And then we're gonna multiply both sides by 50. Now I need my calculator. With the calculator, you first have to make sure you're in degree mode. So this calculator is so I'm gonna do 50 sine of 47. It does not tell me how many decimal places, so I'll do 36.6 feet. Okay, during a musical, a spotlight 50 feet up, so there's the light, is aimed at the center of a stage 100 feet away. What is the angle of depression? So this is the angle of depression. But if you think back to geometry, that is alternate interior with the angle of elevation. So I can put the same angle there. So we have opposite and adjacent. So I'm gonna use tangent. To solve this, I'm gonna do tangent inverse to get my angle. So back to my calculator. So theta is 26.6 degrees. And the last one on this page, from the top of a 200 foot building, a man observes a car moving towards him. All right, so if here's the car and it's moving towards him, the angle of depression of the car changes from 10 to 20. So 10 to 20, how far does the car travel? Well, well, I'm gonna think of this in two separate triangles. I'm gonna first find the big triangle. I'll call that Y. Then I'll find the small triangle and subtract to get X. So if I think of the big triangle, I have opposite and adjacent with the 10. So that's tangent of 10 equals 200 over Y. So I'll multiply Y on both sides and then divide by the tangent of 10. 
So y is 200 divided by tangent of 10. Back to my calculator. Oops, that's 2,000. So 1,134.3 feet. So then I'm going to find z. That's this inner triangle. I'll do that over here. So tangent. Oops, sorry. Z is this inner triangle. Tangent of 20 equals opposite over adjacent. So when I isolate Z, I get 200 over the tangent of 20. That's 549. Oops, sorry, I bumped the whole table. Everything's shaking. 549.5 feet. So if I want this small part, I have the long one is 1,134. The small part is 549, so I'm going to subtract. And the difference, the car traveled 584.8 feet. So X is 584.8 feet.